Tom here from Lawrence System. We're going to talk about the most secure app for end-to-end -end encrypted, privacy-oriented communication, and that's Signal. It has added a lot of features since I last reviewed it, so I figured, one, it needs an update. Two, a lot of people are looking for a good privacy app with all the confusion out there about some of the other companies, whether or not they are actually doing encryption, how they're actually handling your data, or sometimes mishandling that data. So we're going to dive into the Signal app and why it's my favorite app for secure communications. Before we dive into that, let's first... If you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hires button right at the top. If you'd like to help keep this channel sponsor free, and thank you to everyone who already has, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you're looking for deals or discounts on products and services we offer on this channel, check out the affiliate links down below. They're in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store. We have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics you've seen on this channel. Now back to our content. A couple things I want to get right out of the way when it comes to Signal. One, a lot of people have issue with the fact that it uses a phone number for identity. But don't worry, there's an easy workaround. Find any voice service, and I've reviewed VoIP MS, which does support text services where you can buy a phone number, and you can use Signal on a brand new phone number you buy from somewhere like VoIP MS for a few dollars a month. So that way you can use Signal on a device without having it tied to your personal phone number. But I like it tied to my personal phone number for talking to all of my friends and you know, makes it an easy way to do it. We've actually tied our business number to Signal as well, but we're not actively using it. Did it for mostly demonstration and testing purposes. But that sometimes is a problem people have with Signal is the fact that it does tie to a phone number. Like I said, there's workarounds for that. Next, I will address the other issues. And one of those bigger ones is, well, there's other companies that are open source, Tom, and there's other platforms, et cetera, et cetera, that are also open source that are also, even some of them use because the Signal algorithm and all the technology behind it is open source and other companies do integrate it into their platforms, Signal has a couple distinct differences from those other companies. One of them is it's not a company, it's an organization. This is a very important distinction when you're looking for a application because what's their business model? How are they going to leverage privacy or not? And that sometimes comes in the case of their business model is harvesting some type of data about you charging you for the app or selling off the company because they have a business that's set up to run for free to build up users. And once they run out of venture capital money, they're hoping to sell to someone else. None of those issues affect Signal. And because they set up as an organization, not just a group of people working on an open source project, which of course is another distinction, this means the organization can continue and keep allowing a free application. Plus the bylaws of the organization well, it doesn't have a methodology by which it can sell its user's data. They also chose not to have user's data. Signal has been really vetted by some really familiar names in security, such as Bruce Schneier, uh, Jack Dorsey's use Signal, Edward Snowden, Moxie Marlin Spikes, the original author of the Signal protocol and everything else, very privacy oriented. Now, Let's get over to features. This is where things get really cool. Share without insecurity, state-of-the-art end-to-end encryption. This is an important thing that they have this because a lot of companies claim end-to-end -end encryption, but when you dig into it, they're the key holder. Like, oh, we use end-to-end -end encryption, but we also hold a copy of the keys. So this is where it becomes a buzzword versus a practical security measure. They don't hold the keys. The encryption starts on the device it, from where you are initiating the phone call, the text message or multimedia message, whatever you're sending, or video call like I did at the beginning of the video, and it ends encrypted on wherever it lands the other place. At no point in between does Signal hold your keys. So while other companies claim end encryption, they're also wanting to do the key management, and key management means they have the potential for subpoena or anyone else to tap into that, either an inside threat actor who may want to you know, go in and tie into your privacy, uh, see something on the inside, well, Signal avoids all those issues. How do you know they avoid the issues? Well, they have several responses about how they've dealt with grand jury subpoenas, um, basically giving all they have, and when you see all they have, they really don't have much. So there's a couple different 
uh, blog post they have about this. And of course, they link to exactly what they submitted. As a matter of fact, they had to actually file an, a petition to remove gag order in order to allow to say what they did share with the government. Because people say, you shared with the government. Like, yeah, we did, but we don't have anything. So then they had to file a petition. And they're very transparent about this whole process. Now, being that they're an organization, they do have that little donate button at the top. You can donate to Signal, that's part of their business. They're also well-funded by some of the security researchers forementioned that have dumped a lot of money into it and organizations that care about privacy. So it's a business model indeed, but it's not like it's running on a shoestring budget here. They're actually a well-funded organization with a lot of privacy in there. Let's get to features though. Say anything, speak freely. They got all the cool things that you want out of a messaging app, uh, make privacy stick. A new layer of expression in your conversations, encrypted stickers. It's kind of fun, like the standard things you may want out of a messaging app, because it doesn't have to be just, you know, some type of basic boring text, but all well encrypted. No, let's put some stickers and have some fun, but also why not encrypt all of that? Get together with groups. This is another feature they've added. It's really great. Now, one of my challenges I've always had is I didn't like when you have people on Android platform or the Apple platform and their messaging app and getting groups together. Yeah, there was always some challenges. If I didn't see the message, it doesn't show this attached. Signal, because it's completely cross-platform, works on Android, works on Apple, works on Linux, works on Mac, works on Windows. So my group conversation that I started on any one device, I can move to another device and carry over that group conversation with me and join in those conversations and it doesn't matter. And like I said, I have a lot of friends using this uh, that work in security and I've even got a lot of my family using this. So this is my preferred methodology for communicating and it's actually been really convenient. Like I said, it's free for everyone, so there's not a great feature. Now, the desktop support is very recent for the video phone calls, but I've been really impressed with just how well it works and how solid of a process that is. Like it's really easy. You get the Signal app for whatever you're using, Mac, Windows, or Linux, and you can now have a conversation with another person using Signal and using the phone number as the identifier. While some people may have a problem with it, like I said at the beginning, it also makes it really easy to figure out who's using Signal. And as soon as you load the app on your phone and allow it to start looking through your contacts, they only exchange metadata. They have an entire write-up on how this process happens. You can start identifying other users that have Signal. And this makes it a a little bit easier to find people. And of course, if, if you're dealing with your personal inner circle, most of them have your phone number as well. This has really replaced any type of other messaging for me uh, in terms of secure messaging with family and friends. Of course, I have to use all the other ones just to communicate with the world as a greater whole. But overall, I'm really happy with Signal. I'm really happy with the transparency they've offered over the years that I have been using them. And I've really seen 2020 as a big turning point where some of these other applications, and yes, I was a huge fan of Keybase, which unfortunately got sold and the development kind of halted on that. And I was really hoping for them to come up with something because they were so full featured and offered it more than Signal, but then Keybase got bought by Zoom and that just didn't go well. So I kind of quit using that application, which is unfortunate, but with them updating the groups inside of Signal, that's another thing that has been really good because, well, now I got my groups back. I just don't have uh, everyone that I had over on Keybase. Sorry for those of you that are asking me about that still. Back to Signal, last thing I'll mention is I love the fact that you can set ephemeral messaging on there because most of the messages I have most of them are really mundane, but that does not mean I need a complete long archive of them. And Signal makes it really easy to set expiring messages. You can say only hold messages in this group chat for 24 hours, two hours, whatever that may be. So if you do have to send something very private or secure, maybe some type of password or some piece of information, like, you know, I recently bought a house and I had to exchange information to my wife and I don't want to just send personal documents that I needed to do the home purchase, I have no trouble at all. One, sending them through Signal means I was able to quickly get her some piece of information privately, securely, no worries about people seeing it, and it had an expiration time on it. I set it to an hour. She only needed it of that moment, so within an hour, it just disappears off the phone, and now it's gone without a trace in case I ever, you know, forget the phone somewhere or someone unlocks it uh, having that long history. Signal makes it a lot easier to do. So I'm giving it a huge thumbs up. The cross-platform nature of it, if you're looking for an app and you have friends on both platforms, you can talk more of them into using it. It's an easy sell because it can, in some circumstances, replace your SMS app, but it's so easy to use. And because it already has a phone number, you can slowly inch your family over there and have private conversations. And now that they've added this video conferencing on there for people truly looking for end-to-end -end encryption on that, 
it's solid. I've been using it quite a bit. Matter of fact, the voice quality, if you just use it not as a video, but as a, just a voice call, because hit that as a voice call, works really, really well because it uses a nice HD voice quality. And uh, I've been really happy with that. As a matter of fact, to make more and more phone calls, that's frequently how I talk to my wife and many of my family and my security friends. We just, you know, hit that call button on Signal and they can answer from their desktop or their phone, whatever's within reach of them. But uh, leave a link to Signal.org. There's no other thing I have. There's no offer because it's free and it's just something I really endorse. And by the way, if you're really curious to dive into the encryption deeper, that's all documented as well with all their source code and they have the entire methodologies by which they encrypt things. So if you're really into that, trust me, they've got it all documented and it's kind of a fun read if you're into cryptography. And it has been vetted, as I said, by people like Bruce Schneier, who also is really into cryptography and took the time to actually audit and vet the code. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.